Hi guys, um, thanks for joining me today. I really, really, really appreciate you. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do and what you have already done. Meet us where you want to meet us. Say what you want to say, do what you want to do. Say something different to all of us all at the same time. Let your word speak for itself. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Speak to me. Speak through me. You are God. You are great. And I bless you. Hey guys. I was listening to a podcast called Crime Junkie. I'm a very weird person. (laughs) I like all kinds of things. Um, I like from the very spiritual, um, uh, like the typical Christian music, uh, Christian things. Uh, I love... I love the Bible, I love to talk about Jesus, I love to do all that stuff, <clears throat> And um, but there's, there are two other sides of me, <laughs> I, I also love um, romance novels, I love, I love to talk about love, I love to talk about sex, I love to talk about marriage and all of that stuff and relationships and all of that. <laughs> and there's an even, <laughs> and I also find true crime interesting. Um, uh, recent about. I would say a couple mo- months ago now, I was I was looking for a true crime podcast to help me sleep, to play on to play on Google in my room, and I came across uh, the Crime Junkie podcast. And what it is, it's it's two women from Indiana. Ashley Flowers and her best friend, Britt. They've been into true crime for about 20 or 30 years. They're best friends. They grew up in Indiana. And what the podcast is about is every week, usually Ashley tells a story of a true crime case that either is solved or unsolved and people in different uh, true crime situations and she goes into the investigation and she talks to usually Brit her best friend and you'll and you'll see Brit mostly asking questions or the odd time, mostly an epi- episode, she'll quote something or she'll help Ashley out with other information and stuff. It's really cool to listen to. And, and I'm, I, it started in 2018. And then it goes right up to now. It's currently running in 2024. I'm just at the end of 2023. They just had their holiday episode. So I'm going into the home stretch, which is this year. I'm about to start January 2024. And at the end of 2023... Um, they did a very interesting case. Um, they talked about 
sextortion online, and they did a case. The case consists of this young woman. She was at work, and she got a Facebook uh, message um, from this this um, odd person who said, I have pictures of you. And if you don't um, do this sexual thing, I'm going to uh, show them to everyone. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, expose that you took these, these pictures, these sexually explicit pictures. And the young lady did um, take sexually explicit pictures. So she was like, oh my God, what if this person does? And she emailed the person that she sent the pictures to. And the person promised her that they didn't send the pictures to anyone. And so, and she, because of her fear, and because of being only 17, she started to take um, the, the guy would give her instructions on all kinds of creepy things to do, or like, all kinds of sexually explicit um, things to do online. So because of her fear and because of him threatening her and her, and her you know, I'm going, going to whatever to you or whatever, he said, she was so afraid because she didn't know what to do when she thought her parents would judge her. It was an awful situation. So each message got more explicit and more explicit and more explicit. And she kept doing them until she was so terrified um, that she she lived in fear. She had major anxiety. It was awful. And then in the meantime, he was doing the same thing to lots of other girls. He was extorting them. He was saying, I'm going to kill your family if you don't do this. And threatening them. And just major emotional abuse online and eventually um, the FBI got involved because th this guy was doing this thing to women all over the world and how he got caught was he 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 knew that the law enforcement was after him so he planted, uh, he said to her, because they were doing a press conference about him. So he, he asked her to go to the press conference and gather all this information, or he would just let everything out. And she did. She did because she was so afraid at that point. At this point. Because this guy was controlling her. Because, you know, when, when somebody can control you, is, the way somebody controls you is, is, is through grabbing the most vulnerable part of you and using it for leverage. 
So that's what he was doing. He was grabbing onto her pe- uh, fear of her parents finding out and everybody finding out. And then... Um, so she, it turned out that the FBI got another, another one of his victims to, to send, um, him, um, an encrypted message so that when he opened it, they could get all the keys um, to everything, they could get his operating system, they could get everything, so they actually beat him at his own game, and, um, they managed to stop him, but, but they found out before they managed to stop him, he had millions of people that he would, um, he would do this to millions of young women that he would do this to. And, and it was so devastating for the person. I felt so heartbroken for the little girl. Um, anyway, she got her life back, but it was really difficult for her. She had to go through a lot of trauma therapy, and she got her life back. Um, her life was restored, thank God. And they also talked about, um, they also talked about, um, a, a young man who who was in his football team. He was a happy young man. He was a part of his church. He was, um, he was really outgoing. Uh, his, his mother, uh, called him uh, down, down to breakfast and he didn't show up. And he went, to, um, she went to look to look um, in on him, and it turned out that he was dead. Um, he had committed suicide um, because of somebody had pictures of him and was extorting him online for a thousand dollars, and it turned out. It was a criminal. It was a group from uh, some part in Africa who was extorting him for money. And as I sat there listening to this podcast, I was like, um, "I've heard of these online bullying." happening, but I didn't know it had gone this far, and I think, think, and the one, the one thing I had to say was, um, you have this secular podcast, talking, this secular podcast, talking about, um, murder and different issues regarding murder and they're addressing such an important pivotal issue and they even had somebody from SOSA uh, which is an agency that helps with um, resources for online safety and talks about how to keep your children safe online uh, as resources for victims of um, uh, sex extortion and other online bullying resources. Uh, you have this secular podcast doing more for people in this regard 
the, the churches do it. And I was thinking most churches are doing. I haven't heard this issue talked about from the pulpit. And what I yes, it is important for us to preach the Bible. It is important for us to preach the word. But what I love about Jesus, what he said was, what he said to me uh, was, he said, he said, um, show what, um, he said, um, don't focus so much on what I did, but focus on how I did it. Which means don't focus so much on the fact that I did miracles or whatever. And those things are true today. But I, church, if we don't start tackling these things, these issues, from the pulpit, people are just not going to, um, people are just going to fade away because we're going to seem irrelevant and God is not irrelevant. And I'm not talking about getting rid of the Bible or whatever. I'm talking about using the Bible and I've said this. I've said this part too. I've said that what about um what about having guest speakers come in once in a while to talk about these issues and having forums where people are open to speak about things like sex extortion and or online bullying or something like that to really bring this issue um, to attention to people because you might think, oh, my child's a Christian. They'll never do that. How do you know this young man was a Christian? He was involved in his church and he he ended up feeling so depressed, so hopeless, so like there was no way out. So he ended up committing suicide. And he was a part of a church. So we cannot think because our child is a Christian or our loved one is a Christian that that. Uh, they cannot be involved in these things. And I know sometimes it's scary to talk about these issues because we don't know, we don't have to know everything as pastors. We don't have to have the resources to talk about everything, but we can bring people in that know to talk about these issues. Not only these issues, but issues of finances and how to manage your money and issues of addiction. I think we need to start meeting people where they are and attacking uh, the gospel in different ways. I think the word of God is wonderful. But I think along with the Word of God, we need to take action on issues that people are facing today. Because uh, that's what Jesus did. Jesus tackled the issues that were facing his day. And he tackled them in new and fresh ways. When the Bible was taking place. He, he didn't do it. He, he didn't do it because uh, we would be, read it one day. Oh, 
He didn't say, oh, let me do the, par- let me say the parable of the fig tree because uh, people hundreds of years down the road might need to hear this. Or Paul didn't write to, to say that, oh, well, let me talk about this because, um, because people in 2024 will need to hear this from their seats. No, they talked about these things because these were issues going on. We just happen to be the benefactors of these issues because they wanted, uh, people wanted, uh, to have a record so that we could learn from them. He didn't, he didn't mean for it to stop here. I think the church needs to become active and go to right where people are. I think we need to be bold, not only in proclaiming Jesus is Lord, but we need to be bold in attacking these issues because when you bring light to an issue like sextortion, when you bring light to an issue like um, the issues going on with LGBTQ, when you bring light to any issue that loosens the devil's hold, see the devil or the evil one likes secrets. He festers in lies and untruths. And, and he, he does that. So that's why so many people are living in shame. Because they're, they're thinking, oh my God, that they're the only one. Or I'm so embarrassed. I'm such a bad person. Uh, and the Lord just said to me, he said, he said, I want you to tell people to beat the devil at his own game. His game is, is shame. But if you bring light and love and understanding and forgiveness to an issue, it will lose its power. And it can be covered by, covered and restored by the blood that will never lose its power. I love that old school song, by the way. Um, I think, I think the church loves to fester in secrets. We love to do, we love to speak on Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because, because they don't have, like, those issues are to do with us. But not really. Like the 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 it, the issues are the same issues that we are facing today. But the Bible is um, contextually so far removed, so we could say, "Oh, that happened there. It will happen with us." But Similar things are happening with us, and I think we need to do both. We need to have biblical understanding. We need to study the Word and to know what the Word says for our lives, but we also need to deal with the issues of today from our pulpits, and we need to um, bring lights to issues so that the devil doesn't have a foothold. The, de- the devil lives in secrets. The Lord lives in truth. He, the Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the life.
No one comes to the Father except through me. So he is the truth. And he is the life. And we need to make God not the ogre that we made it. We just need to tell people to come. We just need to tell people to come. Come with your mess. Come with your your sin. Come with your drama. Just come. He just wants you. He loves you so much. Will he make you change? Yes, he will. But it'll be in his time. It'll be what he wants you to change. And he'll do it in a way that's so loving that he can really communicate with you. And he wants a relationship with you. He doesn't want you to live in shame and condemnation. He says in the Bible that there is now, now immediately, no condemnation. There is no condemnation in Christ. There is no condemnation in Christ. So whatever you've done and whatever you're facing, there is no condemnation in him. He just wants to love you. He just wants to say that you're forgiven. He he just wants you to say that you you are his and that he that he loves you. And it is just an amazing thing to understand the love of God. I saw um, an interview with Kirk Franklin recently, just a bit of an interview because I can't afford to pay for the app to watch the rest of it. It's an interview with Kirk Franklin and Tim Ross. And uh, as Kirk was talking about the interview, he's like, He's like, I need to be better than everybody because I don't want people to forget me. And I was like, here you have this international selling gospel artist who has been through so much in the past couple years. And before that, he's been through porn addiction He's been through not having the proper love of a mother and father. He's been through loneliness. He's been through all of that. And he's been through just finding his father last year. And he's he's, he's struggling with, like, self-acceptance and self-love. And I said... Tim Ross said the exact same thing that I said. He said, oh, I feel so sad. And I was heartbroken that this 50-year, that this 53-year-old, 54-year-old man is still struggling with stuff like this. Um, And I I was thinking, I, I thought this to myself. I thought, I wish Kirk could embrace the true love of God because when you understand what the love of God really is, you can embrace him and you can embrace yourself and any changes you need to make will be with you in those changes. We all need to make changes. We all struggle somewhere. And I think we've we've done a disservice in not, not really teaching people how to walk with God. We, we've taught them about God. We've taught them principles from the scriptures. But we don't 
teach them how God could be used in their daily lives. We teach them how to pray. We teach them that the Lord loves them, but we don't need, we don't teach them what it really means to love, be loved by the Lord. Um, the, the thing for me, uh, what it really needs to means to be loved by God is if everything goes away tomorrow, I'm still accepted, I'm still loved, I'm still perfect in his eyes. I'm still, with all my flaws and everything I have uh, wrong with me and with my disability, he loves me. He accepts me, point blank, period. There's nothing I can do to change it. Nothing I can do to destroy it. Nothing I can do to make it more. He loves me infinitely. And it took me a while to understand that. And and it doesn't make me say, Oh God, let me be, I can do whatever I want. I'm accepted. But it makes me say, Wow. How do I embrace that and walk it out every day? And I get him totally involved in every aspect of my life. There are things going on in my family right now um, that I'm, I'm struggling with it. But the reason I can say I'm still... I'm good and need it and it not be some, some, yeah, I'm good, praise the Lord, is that I know that God has this family. I know that I know that I know that I know that God has this family member in my hand, in his hands. And although it may be devastating, to walk through this. I know that God has got me. And if anything were to happen to this family member, I know that God has a plan. And I don't just know it because I know it intellectually or I know it in my head. I know it in my heart because ever since I was a little girl and all the drama I went through, at my home and everything. I know that God has got me. And he's walked with me. And he's been with me. He's he's been with me. When, when I couldn't go any further. He said come on girl. You can do it. I love you. And every. And every time. I felt like giving up. I've heard this. Come on, girl. You. Every time I look at my YouTube and know that I've spent 40 minutes preaching and only five people have watched it, he says, I'm so proud of you. That message was the bomb. I love you. Thank you for the conveying my word the way I want you to convey it. And when I'm like, Lord, I don't use the Bible because I, I can't study the way other preachers do. Are you sure you want me? He's like, I'm so proud of you for tell for telling what I asked you to tell tell people, for doing what I've asked you to do. He's like, I'm so proud of you. And and because I get that validation from him. Not because I read it in the Bible or whatever, but because I hear it from him. I hear him say, Rachel, I am so proud of you. Thank you for being a vessel. Thank you for saying that. And I would say, um, sometimes I hear him say, girl, you rock. 
or girl, I'm so proud of you. So when you get that validation from the Father above, it's like your job is done when you embrace and know that your father is proud of you and your fa- and your father loves you despite who comes who goes who doesn't who who does whatever you just walk like a bad somebody you just walk like a badass totally and that's what that's what keeps me going when i'm when i say i i'm good i really am good because i know even when it doesn't feel good i know god has got me so knowing that god has got me makes it good for me and i embrace it but it took me a while to, to get there. And, and I think we need, we need to teach people to find their own rhythm with God according to, to their abilities and their lifestyle and how, how God will speak to them. And I think to think God speaks the same way that everybody is is a growth misrepresentation. And God wants me to tell everybody that he loves you, despite what you did and despite what you're doing. And although he will make you change, he'll do it slowly. He'll do it kindly. He's not like people. He loves you so much. He loves you. He accepts you. You don't have to kill yourself for uh, just hairy fairy likes and and all of that. Know that you're accepted in the beloved. Know it from the mirror to the mirror of your bones. Get to know the Lord. Have conversations with the Lord. Ask him about stupid stuff. Ask him about what movies to watch. Ask him about every person in your life. Ask him about your parents. Ask him about what's going on with you. Ask him about the disquiet. Ask him about real issues. It's time to get real with God. We've we, there's this whole shift in culture about getting real, getting real, getting real, but we get real with each other, we get real on talk shows, but we don't get real with God, we still hide from God. And God is the first one we need to get real with. We need to stop with the show, stop with the presentation, stop with all that, and just come and say, God, I need you to help me with this. Or, here's what I'm going through. He wants to be involved in the everyday moments of your life. And when he's involved in the everyday moments of your life, when you're, when you're in trouble, it's easier to come to him. It's like a child. When you start communication with your children from very young, it'll be... It'll be much simpler because it will be new. It won't be new. It won't be scary. And your child will know whatever they do, you will accept them. See, that's what happened with me and God. Because because we got into relationship with each other so young, I just didn't say a prayer and whatever. We... I started talking to him about everything, about my school friends, about my teachers, about whatever I was going through from so young. I grew up getting 
a relationship with God. And as I got older, and as my understanding increased, it got deep. The revelation got deeper and deeper and deeper. And now I talk to talk to God about everything, and He gives me revelation about everything. So that's why I can I can um, I'm not perfect, but and that's why I can generally stay away from uh, things that are harmful to me, because I I hear the spirit's ear saying, "Don't go there, don't step there, don't do this," or, or yes, you can do this. Yes, go there. Yes, do this. And Rachel, email that person. Send the message to that person. Don't respond to that person. And that's why... (laughs) That's why I'm still single. Because um, I... When a person messaged me on Facebook and starts to spew all this stuff about with me... I, I'm not desperate for male va- validation. So um, I could just, he could say, nope, that guy's just after sex, or nope, that profile's fake, or nope, that, uh, that guy's not on your level. You're not going to be able to communicate with him without me saying a word. And he'll, he'll say, Yes, talk to that person. She's lonely. Or do this to that person. Because my ear is tuned. And it's not that I don't make a mistake. I do. I make plenty of mistakes. But I have the Spirit's guidance. Even when I make a mistake that says, Rachel, I still love you. Rachel, here's what you do to fix that issue. Rachel, here's what's going on with that person. Rachel, that's here's what you, you need to do. And it's so awesome. It makes life glorious. And because even in my mistakes, he teaches me and he loves me. And his love just keeps me going. And the the devil finds it harder to mess with me because he knows I can beat him at his own game. And I will call this message beat him at his beat him at his own game. That's what the message is going to be called. Because when you understand and know the Lord and know Let him reveal to you who you are and how much he loves you. You can beat the devil at his lies and his own game. Because most of the negative, all of the negative stuff you're hearing is from Satan. All that you're not good enough or whatever. That's a bunch of Satan bull crap that he could send back to hell. And if you... And he tried to tell me that bullcrap one day. I said, go back to hell where you deserve to be. You know, I'm not believing that. And yes, I do have days when when I do believe him, but I do but I have to remember that God loves me and it's a all that stuff that I'm dealing with that, oh, you'll never find a husband or nobody will ever love you or nobody ever want, want to make love to you or whatever, or you'll never have children. All that bull crap that he tried to, to, tried to feed me. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's the devil. That's his bull crap. And I'm not, Take it anymore. 
Because when you bring light to something, like I said before, it loses its power. And God wants every negative thought to lose its power today. And I rebuke, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I rebuke every negative thought. And I just... uh, Pray that your truth, Lord, will flow, that your peace will flow, that your divine love will flow. And I declare today that your love will not just be an intellectual thing, that it will become a true thing, that the the water of truth will, will water every, every soil in our hearts and and make life grow where there's death. I declare that the truth of your love will not be just an intellectual thing, but it will become a real thing in our lives today. Thank you, Lord, for doing what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for for bringing the revelation of your love. And this message will, will be called, Beat Him at His Own Game. Because if you if you beat the devil at his own game, he won't have power over you. And if you enter back with God's truth, it 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 will totally dismantle the devil's lies. The only way you could dismantle lies is bringing the light of truth to it. And the only truth that matters is the truth, which is God's truth. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Lord, for showing up and showing up. Okay, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.